ready for true happiness, for deep fulfillment, for feeling alive, on purpose, and in control of your life again? It's time to be the bold, brilliant, beautiful woman you were born to be. Welcome to the Purpose Girl Podcast. I'm women's happiness and life purpose expert, Karen Rockhunt, and I'm going to teach you how to live on purpose, feel alive, and be happy in every aspect of life. I'm going to get real about my life and interview women who are living on purpose so that you can finally live yours. Welcome to the show. Hello, 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 my purpose girls. So have you ever had a dream that you wanted so badly that it literally hurts your heart or has hurt your heart that you weren't pursuing it? But then you also would convince yourself, oh, who am I to do that? Oh, I probably wouldn't be good at it. I fail. No one wants to hear what I have to say. Well, that dream for me has been being published, writing a book, being a published author. And I've shared that before on the Purpose Girl podcast. That has been my one standing dream my entire life. And I, coming out of grad school and actually before grad school, had tried to get a book published. Right when I was first divorced, I wrote a manuscript called Divorced Hot and Under 30, which I still think is a great title, but I'm way past the under 30 bit. And I had an agent read the manuscript, tell me what an awesome writer I was, but he couldn't publish it. And then I got so frozen in fear that I never did anything with that. And it was years, and I mean, literally years later, at least 10, I'd have to count up the years, until I did become published. And I became published with the help of one person. And that one person is our guest today on the Purpose Girl podcast. She is a master at getting your book done, a master at bringing out your story, and she is my coach. And so I cannot tell you how beyond honored I am to introduce you to the woman who is helping me elevate Purpose Girl, the woman who helped me become a published author, who is genius and spiritual and delicious in every way. Let me introduce you to Christine Closer. Christine trains entrepreneurs and leaders to write their transformational books. She is a USA Today and Wall Street Journal bestselling author, coach, and publisher. And since 2004, she has helped nearly 80,000 aspiring authors in 127 countries. Many clients have become bestsellers, while others have signed publishing deals, speak on stages worldwide, and appear in major media outlets like CBS, CNN, ABC, NBC, The New York Times, and TEDx. But what's more important is who they become through Christine's life-changing process. And this is what I freaking love about this woman. I mean, one of the many. She delivers so much more than a published book. She helps aspiring authors fully embody their true, authentic self, and bring their brilliance to the world. You're going to love this woman as much as I do. Christine, welcome to the Purpose Girl Podcast. Oh my gosh, Karen. Thank you so, (laughs) so, so, so much. I'm thrilled to be here with you and your amazing Purpose Girl community. Mm, Thank you. So you and I met years ago. I had had this dream forever, like I said, and I was staying stuck for a million and a half reasons. And then I got an email from someone else, not you, someone whose email list I was on, who told me about this amazing catalyst for transformational authors, for people who wanted to become an author. And so I, oh, I, I got to meet her, right? Because I, this is like my big dream. And then you put out, you were, you know, you were putting out, I think it was a summit where you were interviewing different people. And, but the big thing is that you had a contest and you had a contest to submit a manuscript as a transformational author, what your transformation is in life, what your message is to the world and the possibility of winning that contest. There were a bunch of prizes, but one of them was becoming a published author and one of the books that you publish. And I was like, all right, Karen, you got to do this. And I don't even know if I've ever told you this, Christine, but I was like deathly ill the two weeks that I had to write that thing. Like 
Kleenex all over the bed, fever. I mean, it was like, and I, I just knew you have to do this. You have to do this. This is like, this is an opportunity. This is a shot. Maybe this is your shot. And so I got it in. And Purpose Girls, I won that contest. <laughs> you sure as heck did, Karen. <laughs> it's an amazing proposal you submitted. <laughs> Thank you. And so that was my beginning of my work with Christine and working with her to publish my story and then working with her as my coach. This is my second round with her as my coach. So Christine, you work with so many authors and I have to, you know, you know, I just love you and thank you a million times over. What is it? Let's, let's just start maybe with when people come to you, do they talk about the dream? Like I talk about the dream. Some of them talk about the dream. Some of them talk about feeling like they have been called. Some of them come to me just with this pain of feeling like their voice, their story, their message, their wisdom is kind of trapped inside of them. Um, and some of them come to me knowing that through the very process of writing a book is the exact thing they need to do to liberate and bring their voice forward in the world. Um, cause it's one thing to sort of access that wisdom and that message and your stories and everything you have to bring, like kind of, you know, in a closet. <laughs> but it's a whole different ball game when you are excavating and sharing for the purpose of putting it into written word for other people to be served. Like it ups the ante. It, the stakes are a lot higher. And as a result of the stakes being higher, the transformation, the healing, the confidence, the courage, the breakthroughs that can happen for people through the process of the book, truly like they're off the charts. I mean, I feel like I've witnessed, you know, birth after birth, after birth, after birth, after birth, you know, not physical birth, like, um, you, uh, recently, but, um, the birthing of one's expression in the world, uninhibited, unfiltered, like this is who I am. So, you know, they come to me through different paths. I'm like, I need to write a book to grow my business. And, you know, I've had a lot of people write books and grow businesses. Yeah. And, you know, or they come to me because they're like, I've had the story stuck in me for decades and I need to just get this story out. But across the board, like they get so much more than a book. It's like the book is like the cherry on top of who they become through the process. Yes, that is so what I experienced with you. And I can't even remember when I first met you. Is it five, six, seven years? But we can say seven, seven, eight years. Seven, eight years. years. <laughs> and this is what I was so amazed with. Like I had the, I want to be published, right? But it was like, that's where we started. But this is what you did you took me and the other people who were in the program with me through such a deep process of really who are we and really what is our story to tell and really what is it that we have to say that someone else needs to hear and really what is it that we need to clear out of our bodies that I'm sure you remember this. I was at your retreat and we did so much healing work. I was laying on the floor. <laughs> I, I remember you, arms out, legs arms out. out. <laughs> I literally, my purpose girls, at her retreat while we were doing this deep work, I was laying on the floor on my back, arms out, like going through this personal transformation, which was so necessary because what had held me back for so long was so much fear. So much self-doubt that I had nothing to say that others would want to hear, right? That I would fail. And that was like you just, this process. So let's talk about, there's, I have so many questions because one is I want to talk about what you do see as the blocks that get in the way for anyone out there who wants to write a book, or maybe even as Christine talks about the blocks, there are other things that you're wanting to do, um, and I want to talk about the, this deeper spiritual process because I think it's so important to getting your message out. So let's, let's start with the blocks. What do you notice 
people come to you, they want to write it for their business or they want to, it's a lifelong dream or they have a story that they want to get out. And, and by the way, the stories that you publish, everyone I know who's published a story with you, it is the experience of breast cancer, the experience of abuse and what came from that. So these are stories that must be told to help somebody else. So what do you see as the blocks that get in someone's way? There are three kind of big ones that I'll say. There, I'm sure there are different threads and variations of these, but the three big things that I see stopping people are number one, what they think is a lack of clarity, right? They feel like, I don't have, I don't have clarity, or maybe they have an idea of what they want to write, but they have no idea the process. Like, where do I start? What do I do when I sit down to work on my book? Like, Am I just writing? How does it come out? You know, where do I begin? Where does it end? What happens in the middle? Um, there's all this lack of clarity. And when people aren't clear, and I'm sure you probably know this with the purpose work you do, when people don't have clarity or do the work to uncover clarity, I mean, they stay like a hamster on a hamster wheel, just going in circles and going in circles. And I have literally seen people I want to say the record um, that I've heard was like 57 years. Mm. This woman I met, she was in her 70s. She had a book stuck inside of her for 57 years. She was in her 20s. She wanted to write this book. I mean, that just breaks my heart. Yeah. And I can feel her stuckness in my throat as you say that. Because it's, I get it. Me, like... Not 57 years, but me too, right? And I'm sure a lot of you listening, you've had that desire, that dream, that story stuck in your throat as well. Me too. I mean, the first book I wrote, I mean, I wrote it back in the 90s and I just wrote little bits and pieces. I didn't know what to do. I wasn't into publishing yet. I didn't start getting to publishing until 2004. My first book came out. Um, But I, I mean, I never did anything with it. Uh, Up until maybe 10 years ago, I actually knew where the manuscript was. And now I think between a couple of computer crashes and things not being backed up properly, like I don't even have the first book that I wrote. So that lack of clarity of not knowing what to do, uh, it's it's a big one for people. Because, you know, writing a book is kind of like climbing Mount Everest. (laughs) You know, like <laughs> at least <laughs> right, <laughs> climbing it three times in you know a day, <laughs> right, right, and, and it's, or it it's can a, feel that way. It is a process. You don't just like leap to the top of Mount Everest. You start at the foundation. You start at the base camp, right? And there are base camps along the way where you kind of check in until you like push through to that summit, and it takes preparation. And it takes getting yourself in shape to do that. Like it takes having the right Sherpas and the right supplies and all of that. Yet people, you know, they look at writing a book and and especially there's so much messaging out there now that's like, you know, write it in a weekend, become a bestseller in a weekend, you know, just answer these 10 questions. And those answers to that questions are, is your book? Well, maybe a book, Mm -hmm. but is it the book that you feel in your soul? that you need to write. Um, you know, so there's all sorts of messaging. People think like, oh, if they take anything longer than a weekend or a week or 30 days to write their book, that there's something wrong with them. It's like, oh God, no. I think there's something wrong with you if you do maybe bang it out in a weekend just because like it it takes time. It's a process. It's a journey. Yes. Um, and it, like you said, it's a birth. It's a rebirth in many ways, right? And I love your analogy to Mount Everest because I don't think I would show up at Mount Everest and just try to climb it, right? Without the food and without the supplies and without the Sherpa and without- The oxygen tank. and The, the oxygen yeah, tank. The and, and, and having a plan and a, right? And And what I love about your work is it is that deep transformational work where you're getting into your- soul, you're laying that foundation, which then allows you to actually climb Mount Everest or or do the writing. Yeah. You betcha. You betcha. And I mean, the the transformations that I have witnessed um, in the hundreds of people that I've published over the years, I mean, whether it's just a chapter in an anthology or it's a solo book through our publishing company and my Get Your Book Done program, it's like, I, I mean, I feel like such a proud mama. Mm. You know, I see my clients and I see them fulfill this dream and then I watch what they do with it and I watch 
who they've become. And I, for many of them, many of them, um, they feel seen, they feel heard, they feel valued in a way that they never had before. Like this book gives them something which is kind of tied into the second block. If I feel like I'm sort of segueing into that. Yeah, it's great. So block number one is, is clarity, lack which, of clarity, which I, I can identify with from years ago. And I'm sure, I'm sure many of you out there can identify with. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Um, Cause the second block is self doubt. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Pile that one on girl. Yeah. Yeah. And this one shows up, you know, when your mind is like, who am I to write this book? Who's going to listen to it? What are people going to think of me? Um, you know, is my family going to disown me? Right. Uh, my book has already been written, but it's been written by somebody else. Or, you know, I, I, I said that I wanted to write a book, but now every time anyone asks me how my book is coming along, I just feel like a piece of junk because I'm like stuck with it. So that just all feeds all these voices of self-doubt. Um, and that could be a huge block for people because it's, it's easy to believe that that voice of self-doubt is true. Yes. And some of the work, as you probably experienced when you worked with me and perhaps, you know, in our first iteration together and our current was most recent iteration together, um, is I help people get to that deeper place inside of them that helps quiet that voice of self-doubt because they begin to connect with a voice of truth inside of them. And they begin to turn up the volume on that voice of truth and turn down the volume on that voice of self-doubt and, you know, the, the untruths that we tell ourselves. The more that, the, that we increase the volume on the voice of deep, like the deepest, highest truth of who you are, um, that's usually where I see books begin to come to life as people feel this sense of, oh, wait, maybe I am supposed to do this. Like maybe I was given this seed for a reason. Maybe there is a way that I can share this story and this wisdom, unlike any other person walking on the planet, because no one's walked in my shoes. You know, no one's seen what I've seen. No one's experienced what I've experienced. No one's learned what I've learned, how I've learned it. And when you turn up the volume on that voice of truth, you don't actually have to work to eliminate the voices of self-doubt. They just, they naturally quiet. So I do a lot of work with helping get getting people connected to the truth because then like, then the writing gets real easy. You know, I just had a client the other week. He was was like, oh my gosh, I just wrote like five, 6,000 words this week. It's the best week I've had. It's like, (laughs) that's because you did a lot of work. You know, we've been working for a little while now. That that foundation. foundation, You bet. The the opposite of self-doubt of self-truth, right? Of inner wisdom. You and I are working in a different capacity at this point, right? Where you're you're working with me on the Purpose Girl business and getting Purpose Girl to more and more and more women around the world. And the recent Goddess on Purpose course that I launched, I was going through some self-doubt. It was coronavirus. And I thought, oh, people don't need this right now. And that was like, I was lit on fire when you did exactly what you were talking about right then. Shifting my own self-doubt into my own truth, which was, oh no, this is actually needed more now than ever. And you really helped me get there. And so that makes a ton of sense. We turn up the volume on that inner knowing and that truth and that you are the only person who can tell your story. Yes. That is beautiful. Yeah. And it's it's amazing to witness. I mean, it's Mm. really amazing to witness. When I work with people in the first, you know, first time they're say at a retreat with me or something, you know, it's like they can't even give voice to what they really want to share or that secret that they've harbored for so long that actually is at the very core of the book and what they want to liberate and share. And then, like, I see them when their book's about to be published and they could stand up in front of a room and talk about that secret that if they just thought about this thing that they thought they could never share, they would just, mm. you know, fall into a heap of tears, <laughs> you know, yeah. they would just fall apart. And then they, all of a sudden they're you know, literally in front of a hundred or so people just being able to say, you know, this is who I am and this is what I've experienced. And, um, you know, this is what I've become and this is what I've learned. And this is what I want to pay forward through this book. It, it's like, I mean, 
it's it's just it's amazing it's amazing to witness this second hurdle self-doubt is like it's got such amazing gifts on the other side mm, 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 mm. it does oh my gosh does it ever and and that's where your juice is going to come from yes right like Very flipping juicy. that fear into fuel like that's where it's going to come okay so we've got clarity we've got the self-doubt what's our third third is this belief in something called lack of time oh <laughs> <laughs> Anyone out there have no time, <laughs> right? Oh, I don't have time. Oh, yeah, I want to write a book, but I don't have time. Right. And it it actually is an, I think it's an illusion because the more clarity you get and when you access that fire inside of you that we just talked about with the second, um, the second block around the self-doubt piece, like when you get through those two things and you can feel you know, this fire in your belly, this fire in your soul to just like, you know, you can do this and you feel like you have to do this. Like you can't stop yourself from writing. Mm. You'll wake up an hour early in the morning or you'll stay up an hour late at night or instead of, you know, whatever going, well, not that we've been doing a whole lot of shopping lately with COVID, <laughs> um, but instead of like going out, you know, shopping on your lunch break, um, you know, maybe you'll take that time to sit and write because you cannot, because it's just, it's coming out of you. So I always say that it's not a matter of time management. It's a matter of energy management. Mm. And when you have the clarity and you do the work to really burst through the self doubt, break through that self doubt to the self truth, as you said so beautifully, um, it's like you get the energy. And then yes. finding the time, it's not a problem. Then you find the time. You make right. the time. You make it. You make, you make it. it. Yeah. <laughs> right. Because Anything you're so called to it. Yes. 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 So that's why I say it's this belief in a lack of time because it's just not true. We all have the same 24 hours in a day. You know, and you know, like, let's say that you're planning a party, like, oh my gosh, I'm going to, you know, throw a surprise party for my beloved, whatever. And like, you're so excited and you don't really have a lot of time because you're working full time. Maybe you have kids or, you know, you're managing this and that. You're taking care of elderly parents. You're dealing with, you know, whatever the situations are in the world, which have been plentiful lately, like <laughs> plenty <they could> <laughs> consume us just yes. the state of our world. Um, but you really want to do this amazing party for your, for your beloved. So you figure it out. You stay up late. You wake up early. You get the supplies. You figure out the invitations. Um, you know, you do what it takes. You figure out the food, everything. Um, and you did it joyfully because you were so excited to create this. This is such a great point, right? I've often thought of it, Christine, as like, we have no time until the basement floods. And then we suddenly have time to do everything that needs to be done because the basement flooded. And what I love about your analogy, the my analogy is like, until the shit hits the fan, right? But your analogy is you have time when you are so juiced up and so jacked up about something. Yes. And that is way better motivation and way more exciting and energizing. And the cool thing, I bet you see this, what I notice is that when someone starts to get energized, they actually have more energy for everything else in their life. Oh, Yeah. Right. So spending that half hour on writing, you know, your three pages in the morning or whatever it might be. Yeah, it's feeding. And now it's making you more energetic at work and making I'm sure you see that. Absolutely. Because the thing is, like, and, and I tell people this and if, they're, if it's then they're like, oh, crap, like I didn't even realize that is that they spend so much time and energy talking about the book thinking about the book, beating themselves up because they haven't done the book yet. You know, oh, one more person just asked me, you know, how my book is coming along. And there's all this time and energy going into not doing the book. Mm. When when you bust through the first two mistakes and you have the clarity and you have that connection to the, not the self-doubt, but the, the truth, you know, your voice of truth inside of you. It's like all that time and energy that you're spending on what's not happening, you can just take the same time and energy and put it into the creation of the book and it will, it will spiral up everything in your life because nothing feels worse than saying we're going to do something and not doing it, especially when it's something like writing our book, sharing our story, putting our wisdom and our experience in a form that we can pay it forward and serve others and help other people get breakthroughs. Um, it's just, it just, 
it it's so it will as you said it will fuel and feed every other aspect of your life because now energy just builds upon energy that builds upon energy because you're doing what you say you want to do and you don't have this heavy weight carrying you down dragging around at your ankle talking about this book for years and not doing anything about it right right or the or the inner weight yeah even if it's like you've been talking about it and then you have the weight of the embarrassment or shame or if you haven't been talking about it it's just been in you and in you and so now it's just weighing you down and you're if any of you are like I was for the years and years and years before I wrote, then you just start feeling like crap about yourself and you reinforce story after story after story Yep, about what is wrong with you, which the more you tell yourself what's wrong with you, the less you're actually going to do the dream because <laughs> you are so stuck there. Yep. And so I would even love to hear about a couple of people who came in and had some of this doubt, had some of this lack of clarity and now have books. I want to celebrate them. Yes. And give me I some purpose girls. Give too. me some women. Give me some women purpose girls. Give me some women purpose girls. Okay. I'm looking at my bookshelf. Oh, I love this. You have a about. whole book. This is how many people she has helped. She has a huge bookshelf of, <laughs> you all can't see, but I can, of the people whose books she has published. Yes. Um, I'm going to talk about a few of these. Um, oh, I know the okay. first author of the book you're showing. Gail. Gail. I met her at yes. your retreat. Yes. And she literally. She came over from Greece. Yep. She did. And you know what Gail looks like? When I think about what I'm going to look like in, I don't know, 20 years, 30 years, the picture in my mind was always a woman who looked like Gail. And then I went to your retreat and I met Gail and I was like, oh my gosh, you're like my elder wiser me. And so <laughs> she knows that we have this like joke. Anyway, tell us about Gail. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, Gail Saunders is the author of the Amazon bestselling book called Resilient Heart, Transforming the Death of Your Loved One. And Gail landed at my event from Paros, Greece. He lives off this little island um, on the beach in Greece because she had made a bedside promise to her husband before he took his last breath um, that she would share their story. Oh. She lost him too young and she had promised him, like, I'm going to share this. I'm going to help other people who are dealing with the loss of their beloved, you know, too young, too soon, too fast. Um, and she carried that promise inside of her un fulfilled for several years and she landed at my event and um she was terrified like she knew she had to say yes to doing this she knew if i don't say yes right now to doing this i'm never going to do it and she said a yes to terrify the living bejesus out of her <laughs> um but you know months later her book was published. It did become a number one international bestseller on Amazon in the category of grieving, I believe. Um, the book has been so impactful that there was a university that actually reached out to her and said, we want to make your book required reading for our in our psychology program <gasps> for all of our university students. Oh, wow. So as they work with people through the death and dying process, um, that they would have her story, their story, what she learned, her wisdom, her tools. Um, and it's just amazing. I absolutely adore Gail. I, she, she, every time I see her, whether it's in person or on Facebook, it's like she, she ages in reverse, this woman. Oh, like she 100%. just gets younger and younger. It's like, <laughs> that's why really I want to look nuts. like her when I'm, I'm her age. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's really, what, it's pretty How awesome. incredible though. She made a promise to her husband, stuck inside of her, stuck inside of her, which I totally get. And she has the courage to say yes even though she's scared. And now, because the, the promise that she made to her husband was to share the story so other people would benefit. And now every psychology student at that university will benefit. And then all of their clients, when they become psychologists and therapists, doctors, their clients will benefit. I mean, this is huge. Yep. 
Yeah. Um, I want to share about two others. Uh, we've got Career Recharge is a book written by my client, Beth Benati Kennedy. It's five strategies to boost resilience and beat burnout. And Beth, like she came in, she's like, I want to write a book because I want to be speaking on bigger platforms, right? She's a resiliency expert. She goes into hospitals and medical centers and she works with people in super high stress jobs to help them be resilient. And she she's a leader in her field. Like she knows she's a leader in her field, but she would go out speaking and she wouldn't have a book. Mm -hmm. And she would see other people clamoring to go talk to the person who had the book and not clamoring to come talk to her. She's like, this is ridiculous. Um, so she's like, I'm, that's it. I'm writing a book because, you know, and, and really she wanted to write this book to get on some of the bigger stages that she knew would bring her the clients that she wanted to be working with. So, you know, good news, bad news is we we worked on Beth's book, but she unfortunately was unable to attend one of my retreats. I do a week long writing retreat down in the Caribbean and we were going to Tulum, I think that year. Um, and she's like, I'm so sorry that I can't come to the retreat, but I'm being flown to Madrid, Spain <laughs> to do my first international speaking gig. And this was before <laughs> the book was done. She had just started talking about, you know, how she was a forthcoming author of like once we nailed her title. Um, she's like, OK, can I go out with my title now? I'm like, yeah, you can say you're a forthcoming author of Career Recharge. And just putting that alone um, got her, you know, and then she was like in London speaking. She was flown up to Canada to speak at like one of the largest industry conferences, literally on the same lineup of speakers as her like hero in the industry. Wow. So that was another really flipping amazing story. That's Beth. <laughs> wow. Wow. I mean, you had to just, like you said, such a, a proud mama and the irony that she can't come to the retreat because She's going on such a big stage. She achieved, yeah, she, <laughs> the goal happened. Um, and then there's Lilia Shoshana Ray with the book, The Art of Listening to Angels. Mm. When Lilia came to me, she had, I believe, a 30-year career, was still working um, for the government as an attorney. Mm. But on the side, she kind of secretly talked to angels. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and when she came to me, she's like, I so want to like get out of law, like me being in, you know, working for the government as a lawyer, you know, doing all this stuff. She's like, it's just not what she was put here to do. And she wrote the book, The Art of Listening to Angels. She left her corporate job, you know, Go became Lilia. a pub yeah, became a published author. And, you know, she has started a business, like her purpose-based business now doing what she loves. Now, she's kind of semi-retired because she had such a long career um, as an attorney. So it's not like she's, you know, pedal to the metal, like doing this big, huge thing with her business. But she's running classes. She created a course on how to listen to your angels. Um, you know, she does workshops and more virtual now, obviously, at least lately. Um, but it's like, you know, to go from being a, a, t a government you know, employee as an attorney to the author of a book called The Art of Listening to Angels. <laughs> like now just being like the angel person and her skills have like everything about her is just transformed um incredibly through this process. So yes. yeah, those those are a few of my amazing oh, goddesses such on purpose. purpose. Girl, such <laughs> goddesses on purpose. And Christine, you are that Sherpa, right? You are that Sherpa. Yes, yes I am. <laughs> Love it. And I don't have to go up any cold hills. Right. <laughs> I hear from so many of you, right? So many of my listeners and of course, from my clients, that same experience like Lilia, I'm doing this job, but like secretly I love this or secretly I feel this, secretly I see angels, but isn't everybody going to think X, Y, or Z? And what a beautiful story that when she got out her own wisdom and her own story, in that written form, she then was able to start following it. Well done, sister. Well yeah. done. It's Christine. amazing. It was a journey. Like she actually started writing one book and then like she was writing the safe book sort of at first. Um, and then it was like through the process, she's like, oh, 
I'm supposed to be listening to my angels who were telling me to write a book about the art of listening to angels. So it took her a while to get there, but she's there. She's working on her second book now. She's published in one of my anthologies as well. The very first one of the Pebbles in the Pond series that you were in. She did the first one that came out in 2012. Um, so yeah, she's, uh, she's amazing. And there, there's more, there is, there's like a whole bookshelf here. She has a whole bookshelf, of course. I mean, <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry, two bookshelves. So Christine, this is interesting. I don't even know this. How did you get into this? Because for uh-huh. you to be able to help authors <laughs> means I know you are one yourself. Like, how did this even start? Well, you heard me talk about this book that I started writing in the 90s, right, that I just never did anything with. Like, I, I'm i sure there were resources to figure out how to do it, but I never did. I just, it was my own book. But I'm sitting at a seminar one day with my husband. We're newlyweds. It's two, We got married in 2001, um, and we were sitting in a seminar in 2002, and my husband heard one of the speakers talking about it, had interviewed all these different people for his book, and... My husband being a huge baseball fan, um, coach, player, like the whole, he's still coaching, you know, it's almost 60 practically, he's still coaching, right? Baseball. He was out the other day coaching kids on the field. So like, this is his thing. And he turns to me and he's like, I can feel his body temperature rise. His face goes bright red and he's like, oh my God, I'm going to write a book. I'm going to interview major league baseball players and I'm going to get their wisdom about not just like winning and hitting and pitching and fielding and all that stuff. But like, what does it take to succeed in a game of failure? He's like, I want to know the good stuff. And he was so excited. I was like, that's so awesome, hon. Um, only, you know, I'm kind of a real, I'm very uh, optimistic and also very realistic. I'm like, you don't know any major league baseball players. Though. Like, <laughs> how, how are you going to do that? He's like, I don't know. Um, I said, well, tell you what. I said, if you figure out how to get interviews, I'll figure out how to publish the book. Oh. And lo and behold, (laughs) he emailed everyone he knew to see if anyone knew anyone in the world of professional baseball. Oh, go, Dave. Yes. He got one. His brother knew someone that was involved with a minor a minor league team. Yes. Called that guy, managed to get a press pass to spring training in Florida to like, I think the Minnesota Twins or something was the first team that he had interviewed. It's just one night I drive him to the airport. We live in LA at the time. And I drive him to the airport. I'm like, so you're just going to like land and rent a car and just drive to the field and go talk to these players? He was like, yep. Yes. Yep. That's plan. Yes. <laughs> yes. 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 And end of the first day, he had his first dozen interviews. And he then catapulted those first dozen interviews and ended up getting 300, more than 300 interviews with major league players from all 30 of the major league teams, plus Hall of Famers, um, some coaches, uh, you know, like Ken Griffey Jr., I think he interviewed. Oh my gosh. Um, Alex Rodriguez, uh, like David Ortiz. I mean, I don't know much about baseball, but if you do know anything about baseball, these are players you might recognize their names. Some of them I've heard of. <laughs> right. But he did it. So oh. then I had to figure it out. Right. So I figured it out for him. And then at the time, I was running a networking group called the Network for Empowering Women Entrepreneurs. It was in LA. Um, it started 20 years ago, and it was an amazing, amazingly powerful group of women. And we were all talking about how we wanted to be authors, but none of us were. Mm. So I learned, like, I cut my teeth on my husband's book. I'm like, I could so do this. Yeah. I could so do this. And Chicken Soup for the Soul was like all the rage. And I'm like, why don't we get a bunch of us? We'll each pitch in, you know, you guys, I'll do the work. You guys pitch in a thousand bucks. You know, I'll collect your stories and I'll create our own version of chicken soup for the soul. Oh, so good. So good. Yeah. So that's what I did. So David's book came out and my book came out literally within like two weeks of each other. Um, I was pregnant. I couldn't even lift a box of books because I think I was seven months pregnant at the time, maybe eight. <laughs> I know of what you speak, sister. <laughs> yes, right. <laughs> and I literally, I was like, okay, checked publish author off the box. Like I was thought I was done. Um, except that first book called Inspiration to Realization featured 40 stories from women in my network for empowering women entrepreneurs group. That book actually ended up getting reviewed in the print edition of Entrepreneur Magazine in the summer of 2005 as one of the best reads for women entrepreneurs that summer. 
Wow. Well bragged. Celebrating Thank you. you. Yes. yes. And all the women in it. Yes. Yeah. And then it's like, Christine, when are you doing the next one? I'm like, what do you, what do you mean? <laughs> next one. Um, so I did a next one and I did a next one. And then I had women coming up to me like, well, I never even thought that I could write a chapter, but you helped me do it. And now I want to write my own book. Will you help me write my own book? And from 2005, as soon as this book came out, they were asking me that. And I was like, no, I don't, you know, I don't do that. Mm, no. Um, so I said no for two years. And then in 2007, I had this moment of divine intervention. Mm. And I had two women come up to me separately, but simultaneously and ask if I would help them write their own book. And before I could think of what I was saying, yes came out of my mouth. Mm. <laughs> and then silently in the back of my head came out, oh, crap. <laughs> I don't know how to do that. <laughs> um, so as, you know, most goddesses do when they're a goddess on purpose is I went to the spa mm -hmm. for the day. A hundred percent. And I was like, all right, I'm not leaving this place until I figure out how to write a book. And I created a program called Get Your Book Done. I secured the domain name, getyourbookdone.com. Um, here we are 13 years later. And, you know, Get Your Book Done is my flagship course. We have four different tiers. Um, you know, it's continuing to help people write and, uh, you know, birth their messages, their transformational work out in the world. So, yeah, thanks to my husband for oh, wanting yes. to write his book called Stepping Up to the Plate. So good. Just makes me love you even more. There are so many nuggets that I just want to pull from that story, right? That I love to put picture frames around things. And, and the first was, the first was David's knowing right? He knew, I, I'm going to do this. And he didn't let any voice get in the way of Major League Baseball player. Who, who do you think you are? Ken Griffey Jr., if I'm saying that name right, sorry. You know, <laughs> um, but it's like, he just was so, he let what we talked about earlier, that self-truth, that excitement, he, he went with that. And I think that's a huge lesson for all of us. You bet. To follow that, Right. And then there's this second piece that I'm pulling up. There's a million pieces in there of how beautiful about your relationship for you to say, I'll help you, honey. Right. And what a beautiful relationship when we can help each other reach each other's dreams, even if we don't know how. Mm -hmm. Right. And not, eh, all right, go for it. Let me know when you've done that, you know, but really supporting each other. And then hearing in you this creative idea, and it was brave to go to the women in your network. How about you each write a story? I mean, that. so there is this aspect of listening to your own truth. You know what? This is a thing. And the bravery and, and making the ask and then saying yes. And then this other piece, there's just so much I want to like underline and highlight here, which is even though you resisted it for a while, no, 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 not my thing, not my thing. You let the word yes come out before the thinking of no. And because of that, you have helped thousands of people whose books have helped thousands and thousands of more people. The anthology I was in is called Pebbles in the Pond. It literally is a pebble in the pond because it makes that ripple. And so this is such a story. There is getting your book done. And then this is such a story of purpose as well. Absolutely. And let us highlight that you went to the spa for the day. <laughs> let us, because this is something that you teach me over and over again. And you and I have both done work in the divine feminine that we actually have to step away. And we have to be in a place of pleasure and relaxation for the ideas to flow and for the um, inspiration we try to do it, you know, fitting it in in the half hour, which can happen. But this is what it means to be that goddess on purpose. So good. Obviously, I could talk to you all day long. And luckily, as my coach, I get to talk to you more. <laughs> <laughs> and that's another thing about Christine. You kind of can't help but get that spiritual transformation, that inner truth and the business aspect. She just can't. It's, it's just all part of, of who you are. So knowing we could talk forever. I know people want to know where they can find you. Easiest place. Uh, well, you can just go to my main website, which is christinecloser.com. Christine is C-H-R-I-S-T-I-N-E. And closer is K. 
It's like the word closer, but it's with a K L O S like Sam E R dot com. Um, and if you're curious about what the Get Your Book Done program looks like, if you do have the book inside of you and you resonate with sort of how I do things in my approach to writing, um, then you can just go straight to getyourbookdone.com to learn more about that. Mm-hmm. And of course, those are in the show notes as well. So, Christine, one of the things I love to do with all my guests is something I call a purpose power play round. I'm just going to ask you a few random questions and whatever's the first thing that comes to your mind is the right answer. Okay. Okay. All right. Yeah. I'm a little nervous, but yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I know. I wonder if people think I'm going to ask them a question like, you know, craziest place, even naked. Or it's not, I'm not going to ask you that. How about this is our first question. 10 years from now, what's one of your dreams? Oh, 10 years from now, what's one of my dreams? Uh, to work two months and take a month off throughout the year. So I'm only working eight months a year. Mm, 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 mm. That sounds delicious. I thought you were going to say work two months and then have 10 off. Oh, because that would be well, really thanks great. for just stretching the dream. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe <laughs> that would be really. Maybe I'll yeah, work two months a year, seven figure business in two months and. You know, oh, maybe. totally possible. <laughs> On your way, girl. Totally, totally, totally possible. All right. Second question. What's your own routine to be able to do the work that you love? Um, well, I have a routine every morning, especially now in the summer, like I wake up and the first thing I do is, well, I put my clothes on and then I go outside and I tend to my flowers. Oh, Like I literally call it petunia therapy. Like there's something I love about deadheading my petunias. Like I even deadhead my petunias that are like in the ground, like landscape kind of petunias. I just go, I check all of my flowers. I go Mm. check my garden. I go Mm. pick my lettuce for the day because I use fresh lettuce from our garden for my morning smoothies. Um, so I just kind of get outside and I tend to my garden. Um, in the cooler months, I don't get to do that. Um, but then I go and I spend 20 to 30 minutes doing a variation of yoga and stretch. Cause like before I did this, I used to own a yoga studio. I was a fitness instructor, uh, back when I started my first business in 1991. Um, so I have my routine that I do for like a half hour. Um, and then I'll go into a half hour, uh, sort of meditation, process i will do everything from you know chanting 21 ohms to uh, being in gratitude to speaking a particular um prayer that i love that really calls to me about you know knowing my path and living my path um i will spend some time visualizing my perfect day like what is my ideal day and really hold that picture um i will spend time in silence i will spend time affirming the powerful decisions that I want to make in my life and really I'm connecting with the things that I want to manifest without any attachment to how they happen, just being like allowing myself to be in the desire. And then after that, I usually do about um, 10, 15 minutes of hula hooping. I did not know this about you. Yes, yes, yes. I have a really great hula hoop. It's really good ab work without having to do sit-ups. So I hula hoop. Um, and I have sort of a glitchy shoulder when my shoulder knot's glitchy and I have time, I may follow hula hooping with a little bit of pole fitness because I have a exercise room with a pole in it. And Mm -hmm. uh, that is a really good workout, um, and just really good movement in general. And super hot. So, um, and super hot. (laughs) Yes. And very fun, but man, uh, kicks your butt. Like, I mean, black and blue sore, but, but anyway, it's great. So I do all that, um, And then almost every night, we have a gorgeous park here. I'll go out and take a walk, um, you know, around the park. Most nights with my husband. Uh, Every now and then, I'll go with a friend or I'll go alone. Um, So, yeah, I mean, I eat eat pretty well, you know. I try to take care of myself that way. Um, I have a coach, you know, that I work with to help me, you know, stay in the game and really just up-leveling. Yeah, so... That's kind of what my personal care routine looks like. I'm sure you're all like me at the moment, like, oh my God, that sounds so delicious, right? And pointing out that you take that time, even though, or maybe because you run a multi-six figure business, you are a mom, you are a wife, and you prioritize that time. And that is so beautiful and important. 
It's the only way I can do everything that I want to do and be who I want to be in the process. Like that time is sacred. Beautiful. We need it. We think that we can't have it and we need it. I think, who was it? Was it the Dalai Lama? I don't know who it was. My coach says this all the time. He goes, on those days you have so much to do, you need to meditate twice as long (laughs) because we actually can stretch time. Mm. You know, when we think it's going fast, we don't have enough time. We don't have enough time. But as soon as we stop in the middle of, I don't have enough time and take five minutes to go deadhead petunias, all of a sudden we have time for something that fills us. And um, it's necessary to get to any level of success in your business, in your life, or your career. Um, You've got to find those moments of taking care of yourself. Mm -hmm. It's it's critical. It'll give you more back. All right. Last question, Christine. Yes. What's one thing you want every woman to know? Oh, that you are so inherently worthy because you are. And you are loved and you are needed and you are valued and valuable and beautiful and amazing and a light in this world. Um no matter what kind of hell you've been through or you're, you know, walking through right now, um, you are so worthy and your light is needed and bright. Yes. Mm. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Thank you. Yes, 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 yes. You all can see why I adore her, why she is soul sister and my coach just Christine, I love you, love you, love you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for bringing your wisdom and your genius and your talent and your heart and soul and spirit to the Purpose Girl podcast. So appreciate you. My absolute pleasure. I love you so much too. I'm so grateful to be here and you know be connected with your community and just love and admire the incredible work that you are doing in the world to help women truly connect with and live their purpose now. So um, I just, yeah, I adore and love you too. Thanks for having me today. Mm-hmm. Mm. I love a love fest. And for all of you out there, we hope that you loved this episode of the Purpose Girl podcast. If you did, head on over to Apple Podcasts, leave your one sentence, two sentence, five star review. Your reviews are how women are finding us all over the world, making the Purpose Girl podcast top 20 in more than 30 countries. Because you leave that review, that's how we're creating this women's revolution. Also, you want to make sure that you are on my newsletter. Go on over to purposegirl.com, sign up to receive my newsletter. Then you'll be in the first people who know about programs I'm doing. You'll get weekly emails about how to overcome that self-doubt, how to live your purpose, why you're here. You want to make sure that you are getting that email. Most important thing you can do is to share the Purpose Girl podcast with every woman you know. That is how we change the world one woman at a time. And with that, my love, may you live purposefully. May you love yourself and may you love life. Bye for now.